Hey, how you do, students? Here is a tutorial on dimensioning kind of the first part here fully. Uh, what we want to do here is follow our dimensioning guidelines that we just talked about and apply those to dimensioning out this part if we were to give this to a manufacturer to then build, you know. So one of the first things we see here is it's kind of a, like this L-shaped piece with a rounded corner and then a kind of beveled edge going all the way down. And then it has three holes. So one of the first things that we can do here is we can just identify a few things on here with center marks before we actually start to dimension. So I always like to find my holes. And first thing I do, might not be the first dimensioning guideline, but I will place in center marks on every view that has holes. So remember, these are essentially just uh, center lines that are 90 degrees from each other, identifying the center of a hole. Uh, once I have those three down, I can go ahead and identify one of our first things, which is going to be the overall dimensions of this, which are going to be our height, our width, and our depth. So remember, we always try to attach views that or attach our dimensions to the views that best show like the shape of our feature. And we know that the front and our top, in this case, they're going to share the width dimension. And then our front and our right side are going to share the height dimension. Uh, due to the circle being here, one of the first things I notice is I'm going to have three dimensions just for my circle. I'm going to have a height location, I'm going to have a width location, and I'm going to have a radius. I'm also going to have a radius here. Well, that puts a lot of dimensions right here. So even before I'm putting in my height, width, and depth, I'm thinking, well, if I put my height, width, and depth attached to the front view, is that going to get in the way of other things? Very well could be. So these are one of the cases where I might put my width attached to my top view and my height to my side view, giving me enough room for this little extra detail. And so, again, that's something I'm planning out in the future, and I want you guys to think about that as you're dimensioning some of your parts. So, in this case, I'm just going to start with my width on my top view, and I'm just going to use a ruler here so I make sure I'm lined up, and I'm just going to draw some uh, extension lines going down. And, you know, something we want to watch out for is that we know that our width is going to be our biggest dimension. So we want to put that the farthest away so we can add other dimensions in between. So once I have that in there, I'm going to go ahead and kind of draw my dimension line going across. And then I'll draw in some arrows. And then what I can do is kind of just erase the center. And then I can put in a dimension in this case. So if I were to dimension this out, this was, at least in this case, uh, 3, and we're at 3 quarters, so that'd be 13 sixteenths. So 3 and 13 sixteenths of an inch. And that is our dimensioned out drawing for our width. <coughs> this Something I failed to mention, but I should mention now, is that this is the full size and shape of this part. So in number one, it says we need a dimension to the true size and shape. We're just going to say that what's on the paper is the true size and shape in this case. So now that I got my width, I'm going to go ahead and add my height and show you about it. So I'm actually going to kind of skip to that part of the video. I'm going to add my height, and then I'll add my depth, and you can see where I put those. Okay, so I went ahead and added my height. And you can see here I went from this bottom corner and then the top corner here out with extension lines and dimension lines. And then what I decided to do is add my depth up here to the top view. And the reason I did this is because if I were to add it here, I would have to come from a line here and that would cross extension lines. Not necessarily something that's groundbreaking uh, or rule breaking, I should say. But if I can avoid that, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So now I have my three major dimensions. Now I can just start to identify some other dimensions that I need to make this happen. So one of the first things that I see is on the right side of the view here, I have this little lip or this little flange that comes off. I need to know what that little flange is so I could calculate what this height is by itself. So I know that the overall is 1 and 11 sixteenths, so I could add a little dimension here 
or I could add it right here. It, e either one works. Uh, one is probably more correct than the other, but I'll probably add, you could add this top one for uh, more room or more clarity as you're doing your dimension, or you could add this bottom one. Uh, I'm going to add the bottom one, and the reason for that is because it is a flat surface instead of a rounded surface, so I think this is more correct is to be able to add a dimension to more of a flat surface that's here. So I could add this one, and you can see here that I'm going to very quickly run out of room. So if I draw in my line with my arrows, I don't have a lot of room here. Like, none at all. So, what you can do is you can just kind of put the dimension to the side. So, I'm going to measure this out. And I got about a quarter of an inch. So, what we can do is I can write quarter of an inch. And then, I can then draw a kind of additional arrow here that says from here to here, that's a quarter of an inch. <clears throat> so, I got that little part. Cool. Wonderful. And I can take 1 and 11 16 minus a quarter, and I can get what this kind of like back face is. Uh, now that I'm here, I can identify a few other things. So at this point, I have, there's no other features here, like just body or solid body features to identify. I don't really have any other solid body features to identify. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start moving to my internal features, which are going to be my holes and my radius for my fillet over here. So here we drew these center marks. So what I'm going to do is from this center I'm going to come out and extend the extension line a bit down and I can draw a dimension right here and use this extension line that's already created which is a nice part of dimensioning is you can you know reuse some of these extension lines. So I have my little arrow, I'm going to go ahead and erase in between, and I can measure to where the approximate center is. In this case, I got about, uh, I guess, under three quarters again, so 11 sixteenths. So 11 sixteenths of an inch. And then I know where this one is, and I can dimension this one as well. So to dimension this one, uh, I can then bring down an extension line. And now this is a bit more uh, advanced dimensioning, but if I know where one circle is, I can identify where the other circle is by using a chain dimension, or I can go from this left edge. Like either one kind of works in this case, or either one's gonna be correct for this class, but I'll go through and dimension from the other circle. This will tell me where that left circle is related to the other one. And I have 2 and 3 eighths. So for my circles, I know where they are left to right on my top view. And now what I need to do is just figure out where they are up and down. So I'm going to take this first circle. Extend the extension line, draw my circle, measure where this is, that is 3 eighths, so this is 3 eighths of an inch. So I know where the right circle is, height. I know where the right circle is, left and right. I know where the left circle is, left and right. I just need to know where the left circle is in relation to kind of like the height on the top view. What I can do here, since I have center marks, I can get rid of dimension by just actually adding these two together with kind of a center line, looking something like that. So I can extend these two lines out, make a little dash in the middle here that says that these two circles share the same center point, which is 3 eighths of an inch. So again, a way to reduce the amount of numbers on this sheet, making it a little bit easier to read. So I have where the circles are left and right, where they are up and down, and then the last thing I need to do is identify their size. 
So circles are always dimensioned by their diameter. So to dimension by their diameter, I can go ahead and just draw a arrow. And I'm going to find room for it over here by drawing an arrow out. And then if I measure kind of from left to right, that's a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to use the diameter symbol and put one fourth of an inch. And then to identify that there's two of them, I can put times two. So I have diameter, quarter of an inch, times two, and there's two of them. Now, one last little note I can make, if I come to my bottom view, I can see that both of these holes go all the way through the object. So right underneath there, I can put the words through. So this would be what's called a hole note, quarter inch diameter, there's two of them, they go all the way through, or we could say quarter inch diameter through and there's two of them, uh, but you can use this nomenclature here for the hole. So there we go, we got plenty of dimensions, I'm not sure if I'm missing any, but I've got my holes marked out, it's wonderful. Now I can mess around with this hole. So again what I'm going to do is you can kind of see the way I went about this one. I'll skip to this part of the video so you can see what I can do. I would suggest that you pause right now, try to figure out if you can dimension this out, like what it would look like, and then continue to play the video and see if you do it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you got something like this. It's not complete yet, but uh, I ran into an interesting problem here and just want to show this out. Uh, we've got a hole here, and we've got a radius here. The radius and the hole actually share the same center point. So this is just kind of a big circle coming all the way around this way. Well, I want to identify this with a diameter and this with a radius. Well, I don't want to take my leader lines here for my circles and cross those through extension lines. So I'm kind of like forced to maybe bring this leader line either here or bring it down here, which we would maybe initially say, well, that's outside of rule seven, not between adjacent views, it's not correct. Uh, but in this case, it's fine to break some rules for the clarity of the drawing. So I can draw a line out here for my leader line, and then I can measure this to identify the size of my hole as a half inch. So diameter is half inch, and then it there's only one of them, but it does go all the way through. You can see the hidden lines on the back here going all the way through. So I'll go ahead and put through. And then once I have three things about my hole, left and right, up and down, and the diameter, uh, this radius, since it shares the same center point, I don't need to redimension that because they're already here. Now I just need to put in the radius of that so I'm going to draw another arrow, and I'm going to put it on the radius, and I kind of have to be careful because I know if I put it here, there's not a lot of room to put my dimension here. If I cross this, I want to try to avoid crossing lines as much as I can to try to keep it clean. So I'm going to put it kind of just off to the side, and then I'll measure from the center point to the edge, and I have three quarters. And since an arc is dimensioned by its radius, we can actually just say three quarters and put R. So that's saying that this radius is three quarters. Now we don't have to dimension anything about this line in the end because if I were to draw the square kind of box out and I create the radius of three quarters it's where that radius happens going all the way down. So this line is just kind of tangent to that radius. Now we can make a uh, like an inference, we can make a little note that says this line is tangent to this radius. But once they draw everything out and they get this radius in, then this line just connects down there in a tangential, uh, tangential way. So at that point, I pretty much have all the dimensions. There's about 20 seconds left in the video, so we count them out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Right now, roughly 12. Maybe I missed one. Maybe I screwed up. Hopefully I didn't. But kind of what you're looking for in the thought process to dimensioning out a drawing by hand.